Right, grade elevens. What we're going to be doing um, today is just some revision of everything that we've done since we started, which was on the 18th. Okay, so um, which is actually quite funny because yesterday and the day before, I was questioning why am I quite ahead of the syllabus of the schools, you know, and I was wrecking my brain, like, why am I ahead? Because, I mean, I only see you once a week. And uh, I found out also last night that um, some schools, only, uh, some grade 11s only go to school once a week as well. But I couldn't for the life of me figure out why are we as a tuition class ahead of the schools. And then it dawned on me that, hey, uh, we actually started with tuition earlier than the schools before school started. We actually started with tutoring in at the towards the end of January um, while the school started around February so um, granted I will be ahead with most of your schools of course because we have a week or two up on them so okay so it's not a bad thing so uh, but this is a nice time just to slow down the pace and to just make sure that the schools catch up to where I am and I catch up to where they are etc etc Okay, so we're going to go through a National Senior Certificate, Grade 11, set by the Department of Basic Education of the Republic of South Africa. And um, it's Paper 1 from November 2017. It was a good year for physics. Uh, and for a lot of um, departments or different other subjects, because 2017, a lot of content changed for most subjects. Um, this is a November paper, so it's got the entire year's work assessed. Um, so it's 450 marks, but of course we're not going to do every question because we haven't learned every um, topic yet. So don't stress too much about that. We'll only be doing the topics that we have learned. Okay. And a memo does exist for this as well. Okay. A couple of instructions um, that we are still going to follow, but not pay too much attention to. Okay, we're going to skip question one because question one is just multiple choice. There are 10 questions, two marks each. So that'll be 20 marks. Okay, uh, we're going to skip multiple choice. Uh, probably look to come back to it at the end uh, just for multiple choice technique because uh, multiple choice um, is a technique. There's a technique to answer multiple choice questions and I explain it every year uh, and I always say the same thing uh, because it simply works. Okay, but we'll skip it for now. And we will progress uh, to uh, question uh, two. Okay. Now, question two um, of this paper. Okay. Let's just read it quickly. Uh, question two states that block A, which is at rest on a horizontal rough surface, is used as an anchor to hold block B with a mass of 56 kilograms in the air at a certain height above the ground. The two blocks are connected with rope R, okay, which makes an angle of 35 degrees with the vertical. And there's a, a dotted uh, perforated line there with the vertical there by the 35 degrees. Block B is suspended from the ceiling with cable C, and you can see cable C forms an angle theta to that ceiling as well. Refer to the diagram. Block A experiences a frictional force of magnitude 200 newtons, and the system is stationary, so nothing is moving. It's completely balanced. Okay. The first question, beautiful question, define the term resultant vector. That's a definition, and I'm sure we can define it. 2.2, what is the magnitude of the resultant force acting on block B? Okay. So you guys are probably going to have to do a little bit of drawing here. Okay, I can clearly see that if I drop a couple of lines here, that looks like that's because I have C and R and I have an unknown that looks like that could be a result of some sort. There's a line that could go here and up to here as well. Uh, there's a line that could go at the bottom here and up here as well. Uh, you guys are going to have to get uh, probably best to draw or redraw this somewhat, especially the ropes. Okay especially okay it's your choice okay obviously i will go to the solution so don't stress about it draw a label free body diagram indicating all the forces that are acting on block b okay so a little bit of newton's laws also coming into this little mix determine the horizontal components of the force rope r okay so the horizontal component will obviously be this one 
okay, will be parallel or in line with this little surface here. It's the horizontal. Okay, calculate the vertical component of the force in cable C. Okay, the vertical component. Okay. And calculate the angle theta between the cable and the ceiling. This question was not the easiest of vector questions that was set, unfortunately. This one is quite a challenging question. It's not difficult, but it is challenging. Okay. So um, I'll tell you what. We need some of this information. So if I scroll all the way here, you can't see all the information. So um, yeah, I'll leave it just there. Actually, we fit it in all the questions there. Leave it there. And um, it's 13 marks, so 13 minutes. Okay, and then we'll, uh, we will mark it. I've got the solutions and we'll prepare and I'll take you through each question one by one. Okay, 13 minutes, your time starts now. All right, so 2.1. The first question, nice question. Define the term resultant vector. And I'm going to get some interaction here. Can, would anybody like to shed light on what a resultant vector is or definition for it? Um, I don't know if this is properly done, but I said the result of two more vectors added together acting on an object. Oh, that's 100% correct. Two marks. Okay. Key words there. Uh, the vector sum of two or more vectors. Or uh, another way we can state that is the resultant vector is the sum of two or more vectors. All right. Another way we can also state the same thing is a single vector which has the same effect as two or more vectors together. Same thing. Okay. So again, I shall repeat for two marks. Define the term resultant vector. It's the vector that is the sum of two or more vectors. Quite short and sweet. Uh, no need to put it down because it's it's basic. Okay, result of two or more vectors. Alrighty then. Two point two. What is the magnitude of the resultant force acting on block B? Very short answer. Needs not a calculation. Needs only the words that my mother always used to use me when I was a kid. Two words. Common sense. Okay. 2.2. .2. Make this a little smaller. Okay. Block B was just suspended at the bottom at anchor. There was one force acting on it, surely. Well, not really one force, but I mean one major force acting on it. Anybody want to take a guess? There's, there's like eight people in this class. Anyone? Connor? Excellent. Connor. Okay, so, okay, cool. So I've got two answers, and I'm going to query both, but um, one, the answer was correct there with Connor, zero newtons. Okay. Uh, Connor, I'm going to put you a little bit on the spot here. Uh, do you mind just sharing with um, all of us uh, why you said zero? It is correct, so go ahead. So what I said is F net is equal to um, mass times acceleration. Yes. Because the object, I mean, the system is at rest, acceleration is zero. Yes. So therefore, your mass, which is 56 times zero, would give you zero newtons. Therefore, F net would equal zero, and therefore your result is zero newtons. Excellent. Perfect analogy, perfect explanation. Connie, you'd make a great physics tutor one day. Okay, fantastic. Okay, the system is stationary. So something stationary is not moving, there's no velocity, so, and there's also no acceleration. Okay, there's no acceleration whatsoever. So, we obviously plug that into the formula, if net equals mass times acceleration, because the system is stationary, no acceleration resultant, on block B is equal to zero. Remember, everything is also very much balanced. Okay. Uh, now, someone said 200. Okay. I can understand why someone would have said that. Okay. But 200 newtons was the friction that was experienced by block A. All right. The it was the friction experienced by block A. 
Okay, so remember also another way to have a look at that is that friction is also the um, force that opposes motion, right? It opposes motion. Okay, so the two. So remember, if 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 there's 200 going forward in the forward direction, 200 newtons, and 200 newtons going backwards, what's your resultant there? I mean, that's just vector in a straight line. But what your resultant there is also zero. The same analogy. Everything's stationary. Nothing's moving. Resultant equals to zero. Perfect explanation there. Thanks, Connor. Um, Naika, do you understand better now? Why it's zero? And, and everyone else as well? We understand now better why it's equal to zero, Newton's? Mm. Fantastic. Top stuff, top stuff, top stuff. Okay. Uh, 2.3 uh, draw a labeled free body diagram indicating the forces that are acting on block B it's with extreme pleasure that I do this okay cool and if your free body diagram looks anything like the one I'm about to draw here give yourself I think it's three marks yeah three marks okay so the obvious one for block B is weight all right or force of gravity okay that's the obvious one because it's suspended by strings the strings are holding it up okay and a, and one strings attached to another block okay so weight force of gravity is the obvious one now we know it's suspended by two strings one's going this way and one's going this way Okay, we all know this is the force of cable C, and this will be the force of cable R. Okay, balancing each other out. Okay, if your diagram looked somewhat like this, somewhat, okay, uh, I think my um, R must just be slightly longer, that's all. There you go, just like that. If it looks somewhat like that, please give yourself three marks. That's exactly, if I go back to the question, exactly how it looks. Okay, exactly how it looks. And obviously there, that dot line extends all the way through. Beulah, which is another word for beautiful. Okay, got that. I sincerely hope that we got that. Okay, 2.4. Uh, determine the horizontal component of the force in rope R. So let's just redraw this, okay? So if we got uh, block B's over here, and then we got, let's just draw rope R over here. We have this dotted line up here, okay? And this was 35 degrees. Okay, so our horizontal is going to be over here, right? Like this. But notice something here. Let me just draw this block quickly. Okay. I said that the surface over here is parallel. So if I drew it in here. Okay. So rope R is over here. So if I take this line away, okay, if I take this line away, Okay, because block B is over here, like this. Okay, you've got block B. Okay, it doesn't have that squiggly line at the bottom there, but you get my point. Okay, so here's block B. You've got rope R. Okay, so the horizontal can be, if you drew it over here, or over here. Okay, fact is it doesn't really matter. Okay, which which you drew the top part or the bottom part okay out of just drawn the bottom part okay out of just drawn the bottom part but either way these lines are parallel with the surface over here okay because they're in the same horizontal direction okay even this one if i had to draw that one okay which i'll actually draw as a solid line with a different color now okay so my question is what is that value okay this is block A. What is the only force that is acting on block A? Laika, you mentioned it. Okay. 
Someone speaketh. What is the only force acting on block A? It's the 200 newtons. The 200 newtons of friction. Uh, wait. Block A experiences a frictional force magnitude 200 newtons and the system is stationary. So, determine the horizontal component of the force in rope R and we see how R is situated. So surely the horizontal component here must match what's experiencing over here. Therefore, the horizontal component of rope R is 200 newtons. 2.5's question was calculate the vertical component of the force in cable C. Okay, so we've got a vertical component here. So another another way I'm just going to draw this line here. So um, 2.5. So I'm just going to bring up this. Um, it's very hard to draw a dotted line without a ruler. So let me just draw a straight line. Okay. So what I did, I just extended the uh, vertical line that we see there in the diagram. Just extended it slightly. Okay, uh, remember here was rope R at this point here. Here was 35 um, degrees. Cool. And then of course here was cable C. And I'll draw the ceiling in as well. Cool. So, I want to just drop in a horizontal. Okay, so I'm dropping in a horizontal line. Okay, basically extending block B because block B only came till about like here, so roundabout. So I'm just extending it. So that would be the horizontal here for R, which is the horizontal also here for C. Okay, and I'm also just going to extend the ceiling line slightly as well. Okay, and then further extend the um, vertical. Okay. So, <clears throat> with that being said, I've got cable C here. Okay, and I know now that the horizontal for R, all right, and especially if I'm going to drop another vertical, which is over here. Okay, so what do I have here? I've got an N shape. Okay, an N shape. So that means these angles here are equal. Okay, remember that if it's an N or a Z, alternate angles are equal. Okay, we'll keep that in mind. Okay, just take that away. But remember, I think if we go back to the question, there was a theta over here. All right, so this angle here is theta. Okay, cool. So let me just check how that's going to work. Okay, cool, fantastic. Okay, so now we need the um, we need the um, what's the question I'm looking for? Um, gosh, my words just escaped me. <laughs> uh, we need the vertical. Yes, we need the vertical. So you can either look at it as this line or this line. It doesn't matter. They're alternate. It doesn't really matter. Okay, but we do know two things. We know that the horizontal component okay so uh, I'm gonna call it fx is equal to 200 newtons okay we know that okay cool so if we want to work out um, what's the word I'm looking for um, the horror if, if we want to work out the um, we first need to calculate what is the vertical component firstly of the um, rope of R Okay, let's 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 do that. Okay, so let's first ca calculate what is the vertical component of uh, rope R. So let's first come here and say therefore the res yeah if R Y, which is the vertical component here of rope R, we're going to have to use tan. Okay, we're going to have to use tan. So I'm going to bring. I'm going to bring tan in the mix here, so I'm going to say that is 200 over tan 35. Okay, this one was a big question. We count how many marks it is, one, two, three, four, should have been even six. Okay, tan 35, okay, because uh, remember we could have dropped that line in there as well, depending on what we wanted to do. 
Doesn't really matter. Okay. <clears throat> Ten thirty-five. So we just pop that in on our calculator. I'm just gonna pop it in here quickly. So just to verify my answer. So two hundred over ten thirty-five gives us an answer of two hundred and eighty-five comma six three newtons so that is this value 285 comma 63 okay so that's now the value of y okay now this is a vertical here okay which is the same way because we know that the normal force on any object is equal to the force of gravity but just in the opposite direction okay so therefore we need to calculate well what is the force of gravity the force of gravity that's acting on block b all right is well mass times gravity so 56 times 9,8 and that gives me an answer of 548,8 newtons okay perfect so therefore if that is true then the vertical component of rope r plus the vertical component of cable c sorry cables um, must equal to the same value as my force of gravity okay it must equal to my force of gravity or the normal force but we'll go with force of gravity okay now i've calculated him because i had this side I had 200 newtons okay well I'll put it here I had 200 newtons okay if I check this um, that angle here should have equal this angle here okay because that's right angle over there <clears throat> okay so that two angles would have been equal if I had if I drew this horizontal on this side but that is parallel to this so it's, it's the same thing Okay, so I've got him. So I've got 285,63 newtons. Now I don't know him yet, but that equals to 548,8 newtons. Okay, so now it's a simple equation of now taking this Wally, bring him over here, and it becomes a negative. So we end up actually. Uh, drop my calculator we end up with 548,8 minus 285,63 and we get an answer therefore the force of the vertical component sorry of cable C is 263,17 newtons and that is our final answer okay now though this was a bit big and it definitely was a bit messy okay lots of things we had to consider so this value here if you wanted to add it in on here because here was angle theta um, it's totally fine it doesn't really matter um, then um, I'll add it in over here this equals which is the vertical component they're both equal to the same 263,17 newtons okay so we've got the vertical and we have angle theta here so yeah and the horizontal we obviously know the horizontal here is, is equal so this is still 200 newtons okay so we've got both so it's 200 newtons for the entire thing so it doesn't really matter and so for, we got um all the tools we need to calculate theta which is the next question but before i get to the next question to calculate theta um i'll take questions for 2.5 so I, if i need to re-explain anything so uh, please hit me with questions the question how did i get that drawing well i looked at this question over here i just looked at this and i redrew it basically but just without the blocks all right just without the blocks so what i did i extended the line of the ceiling this white line is this ceiling block over here that angle theta is and I extended it all the way through and I extended the horizontal at the bottom as well 
Okay, Nadima, I see you there as well. Glad you figured it out. 56 kgs is the mass of block B. So I just extended them. Okay, and then I redrew cable C and I redrew cable R. And uh, this line in the middle here is this vertical line here. So I just extended it. So remember, all I did was just extend. So it's like thinking out the box. Okay, thank you. I'll get it now. Cool. And then the next step, what I did, I said, okay, well, I know that this would be almost like the normal force of block B. So we already knew, according to our free body diagram over here, that there's weight going down. So that vertical line over there is the same for this line. Okay. So I say, okay, well, let's work out the vertical line of rope R first, since I have all the tools that I need for it. Well, that's 200 was the horizontal. So 10 is opposite over adjacent. Yes, I was opposite over adjacent. So opposite of the 35 degrees here was 200. Or if you looked at it from this side, this perforated line here, uh, opposite 200 over 1035 to get this little short line here. So if you can see this angle Y here is technically, and I'll draw it in pink, and I'll maybe extend the brush eye slightly, this line here, okay? So this part here is RY. Okay, you can't see RY there. Is RY. Okay, which is this part. Okay, so then the next part over here, okay, because this whole thing is going to equal FG. It's this thing. So surely if I take what this entire thing is going to equal to, Okay, and that part there is Ry, then surely the rest must be the vertical component of C. That's all I did. That's all I did. So that was easy. Well, when I say it's easy, it means it was simple after, okay, I found what Ry was equal to, so Cy must be, because both of Ry and Cy must equal this entire line. Okay, so this part also here, if I can draw it in, it's also RY as well. And then the rest, of course, this little bit here, this little bit here, which is parallel to each other, was the vertical component of C. <clears throat> cool. Any further questions on 2.5? Everyone else is quiet? So I take it with Q. Okay. Last question. Let me go back to my color green and get some more space. Um, 2.6, calculate angle theta between the cable and the ceiling. Okay. This was a nice question. So now for 2.6, we know we second function tan on our calculator. Second function, especially if we have Casio calculators, second function, which is basically shift and then tan. And we get tan to the minus one. But tan theta must equal, of course, um, the opposite um, over adjacent. And opposite to theta, okay, we had 263,17, which was the vertical component of C. Okay? And then, of course, uh, um, opposite over adjacent. Adjacent was the horizontal, which was 200 newtons. So we plug that in on our calculator. 263,17 over 200. Anybody like to give me an answer? You just plug that straight in on your calculator. Tan to the minus 1. Therefore, angle theta. I got 52,77. That is 100% correct. 52,77 degrees. Okay, don't forget degrees. We must finish our answer. If you just said 52,77, then mark it wrong. Okay, 52,77 degrees. And 13 marks later, we have just completed question.
Okay, so question four. This is your Newton's question and um, force question. Um, a tow truck pulls a car along a gravel road. The force applied by the engine of the tow truck is 9,000 newtons. The mass of the tow truck is 1,300 kilograms, and the mass of the car is 950 kilograms, as we can see in the diagram. The vehicles are connected to each other by inelastic tow bar of negligible mass, and there's tension that we see there by the letter T, that's definitely within the tow bar. This is something we see every day, okay? Well, not every day, but we see in life, okay? Define the term frictional force, okay? That's a definition. Please learn your definitions for your tests and exams coming up soon, okay? Frictional force, as I've said, is the force that opposes the motion of an object, all right? And the part that's missing from that definition for your second mark, remember the first mark, frictional force is the force that opposes the motion of an object and which acts parallel to the surface. Just because it goes in the other direction, doesn't mean that it's not parallel, okay? Friction is always parallel to your surface. That's 4.1. 4.2 says, name and state the law that explains why the force exerted by the tow truck on the car is the same as the force exerted by the car on the tow truck. Now, the key word there is the same. That should tell you which law it is, number one. So which law is it? The force that the tow truck exerts on the car is the same as the car exerts on the tow truck. Same force. Which law is it? It's a Newton law. That, that's just me giving a hint. Anybody want to tell me which one it is? Is it Newton's second law? No, it's not Newton's second law. I think it's third. If you said third, second time lucky. Alex, it is the third law. Okay, and now that's the first mark, which is name and which is name it. Now we need to state it. Now that we've got the right law, we need to state it. Okay, it's Newton's third law. When object A exerts a force on object B, object B simultaneously exerts an oppositely, oppositely directed force of equal magnitude on object A. Remember. Newton's third law, the, the very shortened version of it is, I said version instead of version, version of it is for every action, there's an equal opposite reaction. So for the action of object A exerting on object B, in this case is the tow truck, which is object A, exerting on the car, which is object B, okay? Object B, which is the car, exerts in the opposite direction, the, uh, the force of equal magnitude on the tow truck, which is object A. Okay, so that's the equal opposite reaction. Same force going uh, two directions, but the same. Okay, if it weren't the same, uh, towing a car would be impossible. Okay, that's why there's always tension in the rope. Okay, I've had to, I've been on the receiving end of, uh, I've had to be towed. Um, my car's had to be towed a few times. Well, not a few times, at least twice or thrice um, so I know how that all works if you don't keep tension in the rope of course when the car A or the tow truck in this case stops okay the car is just going to carry on and crash so you need to keep tension in the rope constantly also if no tension is kept in the rope once car A accelerates the front bumper is going to come off but that's just car stuff let's forget about that for now 4.3 nice question Free marks, draw a labeled free body diagram indicating all forces acting on the tow truck. So we don't care about the car for 4.3, we care about the tow truck. Okay, let's add another layer because this is a new question. Uh, this is question four. And this we're going to start with 4.3. So my tow truck there, a free body diagram, the, the obvious forces we draw first. Weight, or Fg, I'm using W only for now, and Fn for my normal force, okay? Horizontal surface object, okay? When they said that the tow truck applies a force, 
of 9,000 newtons. Let's go back and check it out. Thank you. The force applied by the engine of the tow truck is 9,000 newtons. So we could either say FA, or we could say FE. FE, the force of the engine of the tow truck. Okay, but I'm going to stick with FA for now. All right. Then they mentioned that there's a frictional force, but the obvious one, of course, that there's tension. Obvious because I can see it there. There's tension in the rope. And of course, um, excuse me, connected by inner solutional mass, there's something else I'm looking for. There's a gravel, there is a gravel road, all right? And of course, they asked me to define frictional force immediately, and it's a gravel road, so it's a rough surface almost, so that indicates that there must be a frictional force of some sort, and that's my fifth mark. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay, five marks. Easy. Come, easy go. Okay, that was 4.3. Okay. Let's go on to 4.4. 4.4. 4. If the coefficient of kinetic friction between the tow truck tires and the road surface is 0, 0.45, Calculate the magnitude of the tension in the tow bar. That is, I'm going to give you, I'm going to put, this is all the information we need. I'm going to give you five marks for 4.4, sorry, five minutes for 4.4.1, and then we will mark it together. So at 10 past, we will mark it. All right, so doing 4.4.1, uh, we're just going to go through the solutions for that. Um, so we are asked to calculate the, magni the magnitude of the tension in the tow bar, okay? Uh, some information we need to consider here for 4.4.1. Right? Um, we need to start off with the right formula, which is, of course, our second law formula, F net equal to mass times acceleration, okay? We know what F net stands for. It's the sum of all forces, all right? So we know that there's the force applied, so we could just use the force that we have here from the uh, free body diagram force applied um, and every other for this is the only th this is the forward motion it's going from uh, right to left so that's positive everything else is negative in di terms of direction so friction we know is negative and tension in this case is also negative for the tow truck okay and that is equal to mass times acceleration acceleration is equal to zero because they told us in the question if they are moving at constant velocity, so this whole mass times acceleration, um, mass which is 1,300 times zero equals zero, okay? So everything's equal to zero, okay? So we are told that we need to find out the value of tension, okay? So, oh, and the, also the other information they gave us was mu k is equal to um, 0, 0,45. So remember the formula for kinetic friction, Fk. Um, actually, let me just take this off here and put it a little further up. So you don't have to do it as a separate calculation. You're welcome to do it as a second calculation, separate calculation. I'm just going to do it further up here. Um, we know that Fk is equal to mu k times the normal force which we found out was 0, 0,45 multiplied by, in this case, is 1,300 times by 9,8. Okay, to get the value of friction here for the tow truck. So 0, 0,45 multiplied by 1,300 multiplied by 9,8 or gives us a value of 5,733 newtons. That's the value of friction. Which is about right if the f if the um, the force of the engine is nine thousand newtons totally trumps it anyway by uh, just under four thousand um, newtons so it's definitely this value is significantly small um, seeing that the um, value of the applied force is quite high so we plug in nine thousand minus. 5,733 
minus tension equals zero. Okay, so I end up with, I'm gonna move tension over here to keep it positive and solve for this. So I end up for, therefore tension is going to equal, which is just 9,000, um, so 9,000 minus our answer, 3,267 newtons. Okay, that's a value for it. Done. Okay. 4.4.2, the coefficient of kinetic friction between the car tires and the road surface. Now, they told us that 0 0.45 was the coefficient of kinetic friction of the tow truck. Because we knew that of the tow truck, we could do it, we could calculate the tension in the tow bar of the tow truck. Okay, tow bar, tow truck. So for 4.4.2, we need to know a couple of things. First of all, for 4.4.2, we obviously need to ascertain if net equals to mass times acceleration. Now we need to, now we're busy with the car only. Busy with the car, okay? So if net for the car is tension, tension's going forward for the car, minus friction. That equals to? Zero. That looks like a six. Zero. What was the value of tension that we got? Tension we got was equal to 3,267. We got that in the previous question. Tension is tension no matter what. No matter what. It's the same tow rope in between both cars. It's the same. So minus friction equals zero. So my question is now what's going to be the value of friction? Well, we can easily solve this. Take them over here, positive. Therefore, the value of friction is equal to 3,267 newtons. In which direction? Backwards. Okay. Easy to solve that. Now we know the value of friction. Okay, for the car. This is for the car, not the value of friction for the tow truck. The value of friction for the tow truck was 5,733. Okay? We calculated it. Now, Demon, what if we don't include direction? If you don't include... So, for, for tension, we didn't need to give a direction because that's... Because tension is in the rope that is pulling the tow... I mean, that's in between the tow truck and the car. And the tow truck was going forward. Okay? So, the value of tension was going forward. So that we could have just put a value there. But for friction, um, friction um, requires a direction because that is dependent on the direction. Friction because it's in the opposite direction of motion. Okay, so for friction in this case, yes, you would need to have added a direction to get the full marks. I don't think your answer would be marked entirely wrong, uh, depending on your marker and your teacher. Okay. Usually, there's two marks for magnitude and direction. If there's only one mark for magnitude and direction, then you'd get your final answer wrong. Okay? But this is not our final answer, so let's not stress too much about it. Okay? Our final answer, they want the coefficient. Okay? So we don't need to worry too much about this one. Okay? So now that we know the value of friction, we say, okay, well, the formula for kinetic friction is Fk is equal to mu k times mu k. Um, let me just fix that. Mu k times the normal force. Value for friction is 3,267 for the car. That's equal to my mu k, which I still don't know. And my normal force is equal to mass times gravity. So uh, the car was 950 kilograms multiplied by 9.8. By 9 Okay, so I'll pop that 950 times 9,8, that's 9,310. Okay, so what I do is I obviously divide both sides by this value. Okay, I'm just going to use these little commas for now. Okay, just for now. Okay, but please put in your values. Okay, what I'm saying is that's been divided, this is the same as that. And therefore, my final answer for the coefficient, which is mu k, is the coefficient, okay, is going to equal 3,267 divided by 
950 times 9,8 is z to two decimal places 0, 0,35. It's a coefficient. There is no SI unit for it. It's a coefficient. It's just a number. Okay, it's just a value. And we're done. That's our final answer. Ura. For 4.5, um, so for example, if you picture it, if a tow bar rope snaps or comes loose, um, the car that was being towed still moves forward for a short distance. And that is according to Newton's first law, which says an object will continue moving at a constant velocity or in a, uni or a straight uniform motion unless a non-zero force acts on it. Okay? So if there's no force going to act on the object, the object is going to continue in that same motion. Okay? The net force acting on the car is now the frictional force because now there's no more tension because the rope has snapped. So there's only one force that remains, which is the frictional force. Okay? And that will cause the car to slow down eventually. That 3,267 Newton friction force frictional force of the car eventually is now the only force acting on the car and that's eventually going to bring the car to a stop there's no more tension involved sorry tension was 3267 um, now that we got a coefficient for the um, kinetic friction between the tires of the car and the ground we can find out what it is 950 times 9.8 times uh, 0 0.35 so the frictional force is 3258.5 for the car and that's going to bring the car to a stop for, that's for 4.5 uh, 4.6 is a calculation question uh, calculate the acceleration of the car as it comes to a stop after a short distance okay now cool so the value that we found here, 3,267 newtons backwards, which if we found the um, coefficient still comes to just roughly underneath that, okay? But um, if we take that, we're going to take that value, friction is equal to 3,267 for 4.6. We're going to use that value because that's what we established, that the tension, uh, tension was lost. Uh, or if um, because if the, everything was equal to zero because there was no acceleration, but now the um, frictional force that remains is the only force acting on it, and there must be some type of acceleration because the car is slowing down, so velocity must be changing. So F net is still equal to mass times acceleration. Okay. So now we've only got this direction. Remember, friction is negative. So we had T minus F. Now T is gone. So we only have minus F. Minus 3,267 is now equal to 950, which is the mass of the car, times acceleration. Okay, we still need to find out acceleration. Divide both sides by 950. And therefore, acceleration is equal to minus 3,44 meters per second squared. Which, if we state it in proper terms, acceleration is equal to 3,44 meters per second squared backwards. Or the system is moving to the left, so we can say to the right. I just prefer to say backwards. It's less writing for me, and it clearly states or puts a direction there. Okay, uh, question five is the last of the Newton's law question. It's the last of it. And sadly, because of time, we couldn't get through atomic combinations uh, today. Uh, but please, if you have any questions on atomic combinations, please do contact me uh, for your test tomorrow. For those writing tomorrow and for those writing on Monday. Um, the acceleration due to gravity on planet X is 2,7 meters per second squared. So this is a certain planet that exists. The radius of this planet is a third of the Earth's radius. 
Now the Earth's radius is given to you, and the mass of the Earth is also given to you on a table of constants. Okay. Explain the difference between weight and mass. Well, that's very easy. Simple explanation. Weight is the gravitational force on an object by the Earth. All right? And it's also measured in newtons. So weight is a force of gravity on an object by Earth or, or on Earth. Okay? Mass is the amount of matter in a body. Okay? Measured in kilograms. If you weigh 67 kilograms, 67 kilograms of matter because you take up that much space. Okay? Mass is the amount of matter in a body. Weight is the gravitational force exerted on an object by Earth. That is the difference. Two marks. 5.2 is calculate the mass of planet X. Okay? So, I'm just going to rock to the table of constants quickly, um, which should be on... Uh, age 18 no 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 where is it yeah so this is the gravitational con uh, constant okay 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 radius of the earth is 6.38 okay and um, we have mass of the earth where is it yeah which is capital M 5,98 times 10 to the power of 24 kilograms. Okay, so coming back to this, um, oh, I think we need to go to formula sheet here because we need a formula. Uh, I'm not sure if it's given to us here. No, it's not given to us on our formula sheet. It was definitely not in this formula sheet, but there's the calculating the universal gravitational force. However, this is not what we need. We need another formula. So I'm just gonna go back to the question quickly and I'll show you the formula that we need. So we're calculating the mass of this particular planet X. So there's a formula that I know I did teach, which is uh, for 5.2. Gravity on a certain planet is equal to the gravitational constant times the mass, either of an object on that planet or the, ma or the, or the planet's mass, if that's the object. Uh, um, divided by the um, distance squared. Okay, R distance squared. Okay. Now, they mentioned that gravity on this planet was 2,7 meters per second squared. The gravitational constant, 6,67 times 10 to the negative 11. And the question is the mass of planet X, which we don't know. So, it's unknown. It's just M. They said that this radius of this planet was a third of planet Earth. So we need to take a third times the radius of Earth, which is 6,38 times 10 to the 6 brackets squared. Okay? So if we plug that all in on our calculator, first we need to plug in this bottom half. And uh, we need to get rid of this fraction. So we end up with... 2 comma 7, I need to get rid of this fraction, which is going to be multiplied by a third of Earth's maths, or Earth's radius, squared, all divided by the gravitational constant. That's going to equal the mass of planet X. And I'm going to put a little X there for mass of planet X. If I do that, plug that straight in on my calculator, the mass of this planet works out to be 1,83 times 10 to the power of 23 kilograms. Okay, simple calculator work. Plug it into your calculator. You could do one at a time. You can decide you want to do this first and then times it by 2,7 and then divide it by this. Or you can just put that all in on your calculator. You'll all get the same answer. Okay, 1,83 times 10 to the power of 23 kilograms. Okay, uh, to, end off five uh, to end off with uh, 5.3, the last question, determined by what factor or the factor by which the weight of an object on planet X will differ from the weight of the, from the, weight of the same object on Earth. So the factor, remember, different gravities. How we do that is we put the Earth's gravity, or 5.3, put it 
put the Earth's gravity, so gravita gravity of Earth, over the gravity of planet X, and we'll get the factor. So that's 9,8 meters per second squared gravity on Earth, over 2,7, which is the gravity on planet X, and we get 3,63. So what does that mean? That's 3,63 times smaller on planet X than on Earth. The question, by what factor? The, the factor by which the weight of an object on planet X will differ. Well, the weight of the same object on planet X will be 3,63 times smaller than that on planet Earth because it's a very small gravitational force compared to 9,8. All right. And that wraps up my session for today, going through past papers on uh, the sections that we've covered, grade 11s, um, thus far. Um, unfortunately, due to time, we were not able to cover atomic combinations, but I will do a separate tutorial video on an atomic combinations question. And um, that will also be posted for your um, well-being and guidance. And hopefully it will also help you answer those questions uh, when the exam or tests arrive.